but without further ado, let's welcome Brian Post. So here's the thing, when you are conditioned for seeing children in one way, particularly like being willfully disobedient, being, um, being manipulative, being controlling, you know, throwing tantrums, throwing fits, and the dominant paradigm is that you should um, consequence them or take stuff away or spank or medicate or diagnose see in all that behavior modification stuff all of that comes from a perspective that what we are doing with children is is training them on how to behave correctly so it's like and that actually it arises from the um 60s the psychology movement of the 60s which was the the foundation of cognitive behavioral therapy and it started with pavlov I think Pavlov may have been around the 40s and 50s, but Pavlov was all about conditioning the dog and ringing the bell. And so that's so much of parenting, like parenting, even modern day parenting that we know today came from the classical conditioning psychology movement with Ivan Pavlov, where he'd ring the bell and give the dog food and then ring the bell and not give the dog food. And then eventually he could ring the bell and the dog would start to salivate. And so it's this whole, this whole notion that you classically condition children to behave by using things like punishment and reward. Well, here's the problem. And I mean, if we don't realize that by now at this point in our society, then um, it's kind of sad. But that kind of behavior implementation and and control and i always say you, those those movements are are geared towards three things as a parent you always know you're stressed if you're doing three things you're controlling suppressing and changing um those things are all geared towards behavior control behavior suppression and behavior change and the problem is that they are they are all external attempts to soothe an internal state so you are utilizing strengths and power and control outside of you but then what it's doing is that's all it's, it's not influencing the regulatory ability of the child so the the mechanisms that we're using are external attempts to, to control and they're not they're not changing the child's internal state how do you feel about what we're learning in, in here though to kind of I love it I it's great it's, I know I've heard a good portion of this on the, uh, the 16 week program okay information to just repeat like, like Brian was saying repetitive get out of the awkward stage and then like more mechanical <laughs> Well, good. Alec, thanks for being on board, man, and, and being here. So why is emotional intelligence important? Why does emotional intelligence matter is our topic for this evening. And um, what's got me thinking about that is I'm about to go over and see a family where there's an imbalance of emotional intelligence. And I've seen this happen before, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I question if the children may have an emotional a level of emotional intelligence that outmeasures the adults um, that are charged with their care. And so it creates conflicts. And I've seen this in families before where the children's emotional intelligence outweighs the parents, the adults. And um, it just it, it's an interesting dynamic. And the reason in emotional intelligence matters is if you if you are not familiar with EQ, EQ stands for emotional intelligence, and it's the ability and um, mindfulness, the ability to have mindfulness, the ability to read emotional cues. It's almost like your social intelligence, different than your IQ, 
IQ being your intelligence quota, that's your, you know, how smart you are, is what we usually measure when we're measuring IQ, or your intelligence quotient, as opposed to EQ, which is your emotional quotient. And this, this EQ, emotional intelligence, came out in the 90s. Daniel Goleman was pretty mainstream with it. But what we don't realize is that emotional intelligence actually dictates to your IQ a great deal. So if you do not have the ability to be regulated, it can actually vastly impact your cognitive abilities, your intellectual functioning. And one of the things that we encounter with schools, well, so in society, as well as in schools particularly, is that we put so much focus, hello there, Johnny and Deanna and Carrie, we put so much focus on intelligence, cognitive intelligence, that we oftentimes sacrifice our children's emotional intelligence. And guess what our children have to have to be able to function successfully in the world? And then the teacher's doing something, they get distracted again. Because in times of stress, our thinking becomes confused in the story. They get confused again. And maybe they poke someone. Or they start to get a little hyper. And so maybe they just stand out, out, out of their seat. Or their short term, because their short term memory is suppressed, they just get up and walk through the back of the classroom. <laughs> because they're not thinking clearly anymore. They don't remember the rules. Now they've gone, now they're moving around. They're, they're, they're at three, and the teacher's like, What? Are, have you lost your mind, bitchy? Get your butt back in your chair. You're getting a yellow light. And now they're two. And what do we do at two? We become aggressive. We become hyper. Somebody's going to get bit. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a full-blown two-year-old. Teacher's stressed out because teacher's on the other side of the room. Teacher says, all right, red light. Go to the principal's office. Go sit outside. Go sit in the corner. Whatever it is these schools do these days. Bindi starts crying, totally melts down, totally stressed out, and he's not learning anything. And everything you hear about the coronavirus right now is all geared towards washing your hands, not touching things, not touching your mouth, not putting your fingers in your mouth, not being around sneezing, coughing people. It's all outside of you. So it's all geared towards outside of you. What can you do outside of you to prevent yourself from getting this illness? But have you noticed that almost no one's talking about this is a virus? Which means if you want to fight off a virus, the best thing you can do is strengthen your immune system. By strengthening your immune system, you make it immune. It's immune. It helps you fight off the virus more readily. And there is an antiviral that I take, actually. I've been taking it for a long time, and I've been aware of it for a long time. I'm going to share it with you guys, but that's not the point of the topic. The point really is that we spend so much time focused outside of us and not enough time focused inside of us. And so with most parenting techniques that we, we utilize with children, they're all, it's all focused on controlling their behaviors, and very little is it, seldom is it focused on strengthening their internal regulatory state, strengthening their oxytocin response so their oxytocin response can more readily deal with the stress that leads to the behaviors. That's the point. The problem with our obsession with the coronavirus right now is kind of like our obsession with behavior problems. Everything is focused outside of us and nothing is focused inside of us. No one is giving us tools and techniques and ideas for how to strengthen our immune systems. And that's ultimately what you want to be doing for your children. You want to strengthen their immune systems to deal with the crazy world. You want to strengthen their immune systems to deal with the viruses and the bacteria and the stressors that ultimately lead to their big behavior outburst. That's why a love-based parenting method is more important today than it's ever been at all times because your regulated 
consistent, predictable interaction with your child in the midst of their biggest struggles is what helps you turn on oxytocin in their brain. Oxytocin is the immunization. I'd like to welcome Harold and Edna Crawford. They have worked with Brian Post for the past 15 years and were the first treatment home parents in Virginia working with some of the most challenging children in the state. Harold, Edna, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. And thank you for your dedication to the kids. Thank it's you. amazing what you've done. Um, tell me, I, I know a lot of these children have been in residential treatment programs. So tell me, tell me what, the, what is that? Residential treatment programs, well, when kids are displaced from home for whatever reason or reasons, uh, they come in. The first home we worked in was a shelter care program, and primarily in that, in that residence, we just had to monitor the kids, make sure they were safe, and give them their medication and take them outside and let them play. Um, there was no therapy involved in the home itself because it was, it was a big facility, and we would just make sure they're safe and uh, take the medication. So a residential treatment home is primarily about a place where kids can go so that they don't be on the street and at least they have food to eat and they're in a safe environment. Well, they're in a, <laughs> I'd say safe environment. And they are just kind of babysit it and just make sure they don't get hurt or get in trouble. Do things to support your immune system, your bio, your, you know, if you can create an antiviral um, in, in internal environment, you're going to be so much better off when it comes to fighting fighting off any kind of disease or any kind of illness. So then I want to talk about school. So first thing this morning, got up, has, was having a cup of coffee with Mimi, and uh, on the news is talking about all these school closures and the experts coming on, talking about what to do with parents because schools are now, you know, they're not, they're going to keep kids home, but then they want to do online. And that's creating all this anxiety. And I work with families who have a tough enough time just creating relationships with their kids much less trying to get them to do schoolwork and so the expert on the television was trying to give parents you know this guidance for how to you know get your kids to engage in school here's what I'm gonna tell you guys from the bottom of my heart and from the deepest depth of my expertise if your children are sent home over the next week over the next two weeks and they have to try to do online participation throw that crap in a closet somewhere and don't even think about it. Figure out some activities for your kids. Figure out some things that you guys can do to have fun. The last thing I want you worried about is freaking schoolwork. They can catch up on that schoolwork when they get back to school or they can catch up on it next year. They're not going to lose anything except fear and stress by you not creating a big scenario over them having to stay up to date with school and worst case scenario for you guys if you just if you're so anal that you've got to make sure your kids participate in these online educational modules or whatever crap they're trying to do then you can tell I kind of feel passionate about this then do it with them or do it for them and just get it done. Make it connected, make it fun, make it safe. Don't spend all day on that stuff. When kids are in school, when your kids are away from you and they're in the classroom, they're only getting on average two hours of solid educational content anyway. So they spend that whole day at school and so much of that day is interspersed with breaks, bathrooms, recess, cafeteria, transitions, talking and laughing, playing in the hallways, PE, sports. They're not even learning for a full, for a full uh, eight hour day. So don't think you've got to force your kid to learn because they're home and now you're stressed out because you enjoy your downtime. Take care of yourselves and take care of your children and do something fun and get out and, and get some exercise. Find a place where you can swim indoors. Don't Think of that school environment, that need to do that as a priority because it is not. And if I need to write you a letter of permission, I am happy to do that. Choose love. Choose love. Choose love.